Good morning, second graders. I hope you're having a good day so far. We are going to continue on with our nonfiction narrative books. We've read a nonfiction narrative about a cactus, about an oak tree, about a salmon. Today we are going to read another book about an animal that you can find in water, and this is called Think of an Eel. Have any of you eaten an eel? It's a little bit less common. A lot of people eat salmon, but if you like sushi, you can get eel sushi, and I particularly like eel sushi. So if you like sushi and you haven't tried eel yet, I recommend it. All right, so think of an eel. Remember, nonfiction narrative books are told like a story, but they tell us real facts. So I'm already wondering, what are some similarities or differences that we're going to hear about between our eel book and our salmon book, and maybe even our oak book and our cactus? So think of an eel. Already it's a little bit different. In our salmon book, on the very first page there was a map with all different kinds of salmon. So I don't see that. So I'm wondering, is there only one kind of eel? Hmm. Think of an eel. He swims like a fish. He slides like a snake. Do you think those are similes? He swims like a fish. He slides like a snake. That sure sounds like a simile. You've been talking about similes with Mrs. Risen. There's a warm, weedy sea to the south of Bermuda. It's also called Sargasso. No wind ever blows there. No sailing ships sail there. For thousands of years, there's a secret lay hidden. This salt, soupy sea is where eels are born. Deep down where it's blackest, eel eggs become eel. He looks like a willow leaf, clear as a crystal. Ooh, another simile, clear as a crystal. It says baby eels are born in early spring. A real one is only about this big. So pretty small. His fierce jutting mouth has teeth like a saw blade. He eats like a horse and swims up through the water. I hear so many similes. I'm gonna have to go and tell Mrs. Risen. He looks like a willow leaf, clear as a crystal, teeth like a saw blade, eats like a horse. So many similes. Imagine this eel leaf and millions just like him, swimming on waves across the wide sea. Some are unlucky, the seagulls are waiting. Beaks snap like scissors through wriggling waters. So it seems like our book has facts at the bottom. It says young eels from the Sargasso travel either to Europe or to America, whichever their parents did before them. So they go in two places, either to America or to Europe. But they have to make it through all the birds who want to eat them. Eels swim for three years till he reaches the shore, but the river's too cold, there's still snow on the mountains. So he waits in the water, turns into an elver, now he looks like a shoelace made out of glass. So it says eels arrive in Europe around Christmas time, they wait offshore until spring, and as they wait they turn into elvers. So elvers are um, they're not babies, they're what eels are called as they grow, elvers. And how amazing, eels swim for three years until they reach the shore. That's a long time. When spring warms the shoreline, the smell of fresh water excites the glass elver. Into the river he swims like a mad thing. He wriggles up rapids, climbs rocks, around waterfalls. Riverbanks guide him. Nothing will stop him. Remember, we have some facts at the bottom that are written in a different font. So that's what tells me that there's something special about them. They're not in the same font or type of writing. So it says, eels navigate by instinct. They always seem to know where they are going. Around a drowned oak stump. Oak stump? Have we read about oak trees this week? Connection. Through twisting green weeds, a mud hold is hidden. Eel knows without thinking it's what he's been seeking. 
He slips through the ooze. This hole is his home. So here's our writing that's in a little bit different font. Mud holes, burrows, and cracks in the riverbed are all homes for eels. Think of an eel. After years in the river, he's slit-eyed and slimy and thick like a snake. He gulps sickleback eggs, eats shrimp and small fishes. Shrimp? Eels feed mostly at night. So I'm having a connection here. Salmon live both in river and ocean. And same thing happened with our eel. They started in the ocean and now they're in river banks. If the river is empty, he swims for the mud hole, slips through the grass to steal snails from the pond. An eel can live out of water for two days or longer if the ground is wet, breathing through its slimy skin. That's a long time to survive if you normally breathe underwater. One day, eel stops eating. His stomach is shrinking. His long, winding body turns silver and black. Eyes like black currants. There's another simile. Eyes like black currants. Black currants are like small raisins. Bulge into headlights. Now for the last time, eels slide from the mud hole. His years in the river are over forever. So it sounds like maybe he's going to swim back to the ocean. So they spent some time in the river. Silver eels waits for a night that is moonless when the rain from the mountains has flooded the stream. Then he slips down the river, down to the seashore. The time has arrived for his long journey home. This is very similar to a salmon. And says so silver eels usually leave the river in September or October. So right now! While they're waiting for a dark night, they sometimes get tangled up in a ball. For 80 days, silver eels swim through the ocean, squirm like a secret from seabird and sailor. There are millions just like him deep down in the water, swimming silently back to the Sargosa Sea. Eels have big eyes for seeing in the dark. So this is a very similar migration to salmon. They start someplace, they go someplace, and then they go back. There's eel tomb and eel cradle in the weedy Sargasso. For 80 days swimming, not eating, not sleeping, eel's long, whiting body is worn out and wasted. He spills his new life carried deep in his belly, then seeks through the sea like a used silver wrapper. It says the male eel's sperm fertilizes the female's eggs in the water. So that's how they have babies. Deep down, where is the blackest, eel eggs become eel. He looks like a willow leaf, clear as a crystal. His fierce jutting mouth has teeth like a saw blade. This seems very similar to the beginning of the book. He eats like a horse and swims up through the water. Imagine this eel leaf and millions just like him, swimming on waves across the wide sea. So how they start now, as they get bigger. The end. So this is something that I know that they have books on Epic about. So if you're like, how cool are eels? Or I want to know more about eels. Go to Epic and in the search bar, type in eel, E-E-L. And then you can read more books about it. You could even write down some facts. Or maybe you want to do more comparing of salmon and eel. So you spend some time on Epic reading books about both and writing down some facts. Or you could write in your journal about them. Those are all ideas to continue your learning or enhance what you're reading about. All right. I will see you for math and later in small groups.